My cam counselor was insane. Let's all preface this by saying this happened in the very early 90s. And as we all know, it was a different world those days, and I was pretty naive for a kid. Also, I had a kind of fucked up childhood, so this was not the worst thing to happen by far. And I had a pretty messed up childhood, so this is not the worst of things to happen by far. And therefore, I pretty much brushed it off. When I was maybe 11 or 12 years old, I would visit the boys' club a lot. This was a pretty big deal back in the day, and my parents thought that sending me to the boys' club camp for the summertime only made sense. The camp was not an overnight type deal, but featured all the normal things you'd expect like a lake, arts and crafts area, crappy school style lunches. I did the normal camp things like found a girlfriend and getting into trouble. The camp was run by counselors, which I can only assume were in their 20s to 30s. When you're 12, it seems very old, and as you would expect, they would come up with very interesting punishments for kids like being forced to carry a huge wooden totem pole in circles in a hot field for some time. I know that's a pretty messed up punishment. Or just straight up punching you in the chest and knocking the wind out of you, which I did experience once or twice. One of the counselors that I had the experience with was named TJ, and he was a very large well-built guy in his 20s. One day, I did something wrong and got sent to the lunch area for essentially detention. The area was actually a large concrete floor of a wooden roof attached to a cabin that contained the kitchen. It was basically a school lunch setup where you would come up and choose chocolate milk or orange juice and get served a crappy turkey sandwich, a pack of mayo, and one of those amazing brownies. When I get there, I notice there were four or five kids already sitting at benches, and TJ is in the front of everyone by the serving area pacing and saying something. I sit down and don't really remember what happened until Things started to get weird. TJ pulled out a knife and got an apple. He started skinning and stabbing it and saying things like, this is what I'll do to you if you get in trouble again, and other things of that nature. At this moment, I honestly felt like not scared in any way due to my tendency to completely shut down when stuff gets bad, but I did remember feeling very creeped out and that he was trying so hard to be threatening. The younger kids, essentially a little girl who was maybe eight or so was freaking out crying. The next thing I remember is him telling her to follow him into the kitchen. I then heard lots of screaming and crying coming from the back of the kitchen. After a while, he came back with her, and her face was streamed with tears. I remember it vividly. He then looked at me and another boy and told us to follow him as he escorted us to a huge walk-in refrigerator and brought us inside. He said, I want you both to start screaming and acting like I'm killing you in here. If you don't make the other kids scared, I'll kill you for real. We did as he asked. When he closed the door, we started screaming and wailing. At this point, I honestly thought it was kind of funny because I rationalized that the little girl was also told the same. Anyways, after five, maybe ten minutes, he let us out and told us to go back to our benches again. I don't remember anything after this, just kind of a blank. I remember when I got home that night from the camp telling my mom about it, and I remember she called somebody, and I think that guy got fired? I don't remember ever seeing him again, and my parents never sent me back. I really never really thought about it growing up, but as the years have gone by, I look back on things that I shrugged off as normal, and I see they were anything but that. My old summer camp counselor. First, some background. I'm a 22-year-old college senior about to graduate and start medical school in the fall. This happened when I was in elementary school, so over a decade ago. Over the summer way back then, my mom sent me to YMCA summer camp. I enjoyed going in every day and hanging out with all my friends from school who also went to the camp, but I especially loved one of the counselors, Mike. Mike was always sitting in the same spot when I got dropped off in the morning, and he would see me walk in and put a huge smile on his face. We'd always sit there and play cards or some other board games in the morning while all the other kids were arriving. Once the day's scheduled activity started, Mike would always be the counselor in charge of my group. He would just, just be close to me. As a kid, I didn't know that was weird. I really liked him, as I said, as I thought he was really cool as an 8-year-old. Fast forward a couple years, my mom, younger sister, and I were out at a state park in the area. We had just gone down there to hang out for the day. We had a great time on the playground, walking around the trails, etc. Then we head back to the car. When we arrive back at the car, my mom was getting my sister all strapped in and ready for the ride home, and I was getting situated in the back seat as well. 
Now our car was in the parking lot, obviously, and there really weren't a ton of people in the park that day. The lot was pretty much empty. So when I noticed that there was a car parked right next to our car, I was like, that's weird. But again, I was a kid and didn't really think anything of it. Why would this car park literally right next to us when I can see 50 empty spots from right here? Anyways, my mom is getting my sister and I all ready for the trip back home. As I said, suddenly the driver's door of the other car opens and out pops Mike. My mom recognized him, so she said, hi, and continued back to what she was doing. Mike says, do you mind if I take a couple pictures of me? He's gotten so grown and I want to remember this. My mom obviously goes, no, you're not going to do that. Shuts the driver's door and locks the car and we leave. As we're leaving, I can see Mike trying to take a photo like through the windows of the car. A couple years later, when I was a little bit older, my mom told me more details about Mike. My mom at the time was pretty high up in the company that pairs kids with adult mentors. Adults would apply to be paired with a kid. So my mom starts telling me about how one day we were going through the applications to be a mentor and Mike's name popped up. Apparently, someone else had interviewed Mike and recommended him for approval into the system. My mom, on the other hand, essentially vetoed it because she obviously had known Mike from all these other experiences and got a weird vibe from him that something was up. So finally, we were watching the news at dinner one day a little bit later. They start sharing a story about a man who was arrested. And they showed the mugshot of the man, Mike. The charge? Thousands of images of, and videos of child porn that he both had made and was in possession of. He was actually caught by Border Patrol as he was acting weird when he was trying to cross into Canada. And they decided to search his car and found a bunch of it on his computer. They alerted US authorities who then searched his house and found a ton more of it. I am 100% confident that he wanted to add me to the collection. If not for my mom having a great mother's instinct and the Canada US border, it might have happened. Summer camp counselor, Mike, let's not cross paths again. Camp was okay without you there. I've worked two summers now at the camp I always went to when I was younger. I always loved going and enjoying myself there. So when I was given the opportunity to work there, I snatched up one of those open positions of work crew along with my older brother, being a counselor, if you will. When I got there, I found out a good friend of mine that I would hang out with every year was a camper there and also got a job there. We still had two other male work crew members who showed up a bit later. One was a redneck and the other was a skater punk. We all got along fine and are still friends almost two years later. We look like a ragtag crew, but got all our work done quickly and efficiently. That is until we had day camp, where we approximately 250 something campers. We needed more people to work in the kitchen and help clean up the camp, so the higher ups hired two more people on. Both girls, one was an extra counselor and the other ones worked in the kitchen, but stayed with a female work crew. I had been warned multiple times by the redneck I work with, who knew the kitchen girl from church and school, that she was unstable and a typically creepy person. I didn't heed to his multiple warnings and started talking to her. She seemed fine at first. She enjoyed some of the music, books, and movies I enjoyed. I ended up having to sit at the table where she was eating. All the seats were taken except for the one right next to her. I sat down my tray and started talking to her. It turns out I had met her the previous year when we were both campers. I just hadn't remembered her. I told her as such, and she reminded me of the fact that I would always sit at the peanut allergy table with my favorite counselor. She would sit at the same table because her friends was the one who had the allergy. Since it was day camp, all the campers would leave to go home at around 3, leaving everyone the entire evening to do pretty much whatever they wanted. I would usually spend my time in the camp's lobby using my laptop to check Facebook or watch some YouTube videos. That night, I did not know it was her birthday. To celebrate her parents had come and got her for a concert and she was going to go with some of her friends. I found that out by going on Facebook and accepting her friend request. I got a message from her approximately 30 seconds after accepting her friend request asking if I missed her yet. 
I had yet to find out she was gone, so I jokingly told her no, and asked why would I miss someone who's still on campus. She told me she had left for the concert a couple hours prior. I started asking who was playing, just keeping up a conversation with her. She then switched the conversation over to how cute I was, and that she had been in love with me ever since she met me the previous summer. I didn't know what to say, so I made up an excuse that I, I had to go somewhere and do a clogged toilet or something. She said bye, and I quickly closed my laptop and walked back to my cabin, terrified. I told my brother in the redneck what happened. My older brother brushed it off and went back to playing video games with my friend and the skater. The redneck told me the best course of action is to stop talking to her and to just lay low the next day and see what happens. Since it was camp, nobody in the work crew cabin went to bed early because we were all teenagers with a TV and video game system. It was around 1 in the morning when I saw a car pull into the parking lot and the girl got out, waved by to her parents, and then started walking to her cabin. I decided to see what was going on, since all the other guys were downstairs on the first floor of the cabin playing video games with the lights off, and the upstairs was always usually dark. I went upstairs to look out the window and watched what happened. She turned around the second her parents' van was out of sight, and she slowly started creeping back over to our cabin. She just sat there on the picnic table, just staring, staring at our cabin. She left at around 1 in the morning and I guess went to bed. The next morning, everyone got up for the morning staff meeting and then to breakfast. I didn't see her anywhere, so I thought I was fine. Turns out she had been waiting for me to sit down and came over to sit directly beside me. She didn't say anything the entire meal. I got up to go clean and then chilled in the cabin playing video games, telling the others what happened at breakfast. Lunch that day was the same. She waited for me to sit down, then sat down right next to me, not saying a word. I quickly ate and decided the best course of action was to sit in the cabin waiting until I was called out for a job. I got bored and decided to go take my laptop to the lobby and to just waste time until I was needed. When I walked out the cabin, she was just sitting there on our picnic table just staring again. I quickly walked to the lobby where a few other people were sitting. I opened up Facebook and had about 12 message notifications waiting from her asking where I was and telling me she loved me over and over again. I had also been tagged in a post from her about how tall boys were cute. I promptly closed my laptop and quickly walked back to my cabin. Nothing else happened that day or the next. The worst thing happened when I was walking down the dining hall to get some coffee with my older brother and the redneck. My older brother went and hung out with some of the counselors, so it was just me and the redneck talking. We had finished getting our coffee and started to walk outside when he pointed her out standing behind a tree, looking into the dining hall. We had a great idea of walking out to the lobby and going to the front of the building. When we got out of the lobby, he told me not to look, but there she was, just standing about 20 feet behind us, standing behind a tree. We started walking around the campgrounds to get out of her sight, where we would be able to quickly run off and circle around back to our cabin. The entire time, she was just standing there staring at me. We eventually got back to the cabin, and we ended up locking every door and window of our cabin. Thankfully, the next day was the last day of the week, and she ended up only working that week. I unfriended her from Facebook and kept getting a friend request from her. I found a couple months later, she had left her phone out in the open. Her mother had gone through it and found pictures of two guys walking around the campground holding coffee cups. So, creepy coworker, let's not meet again. Guy at summer camp tells us how he kills animals. When I was 13 years old, my parents sent me to a summer camp in the mountains a few hours away from home. It turned out to be a very religious summer camp. But besides that, we went whitewater rafting, did paintball, shot shotguns and arrows, and it was all pretty fun, I guess. However, the people at this camp were weird as heck. Every single one of them, I mean. I could probably go on and on about all the weird people I met, but none of them were really creepy besides this one guy, David. Now, David was much taller than everyone else and seemed older. I think he once said that he was 17 years old. He mostly kept to himself and would just watch us play games like volleyball. Even though he never really said anything, he seemed pretty polite. The first red flag that happened was one day at breakfast, the camp counselor, is that what they're called? I don't know, announced we would have big beans with breakfast. David got really angry and yelled, You have two black kids here, and you're eating big beans for breakfast? 
David was black and evidently thought this was racist. The counselor looks confused and kind of scared and didn't really say much until David calmed down. But that isn't why David is creepy, no. David was always seemed pretty cool, except for the anger problem until one day we're playing Two Truths One Lie on the back bus from Tennessee. It all went okay until it was David's turn. He would say things like, I once threw a kitten out of a window. I killed my best friend. I used to kill dogs for fun. None of us knew how to guess which was the lie, but David went on to elaborate on his stories for the story of how he killed his best friend. This one doesn't actually seem like David's fault, and I kind of felt bad for him. Apparently, his friend wanted to go down a steep road with David and see who could go faster. The friend had a skateboard and a bike, and David chose the bike. As they were going down the hill, a car started going across the street that intersected this street. David slammed on the brakes of his bike and his friend couldn't on the skateboard and got hit by the car. What makes it hard to feel bad for David though is that he was smiling and laughing when telling the story and David never smiled. For the story on killing the wild dogs and David used to live in Haiti, there are packs of stray dogs in Haiti and David and his friends used to find ways of killing them. I think he mentioned throwing rocks at them among others that I have forgotten. Now for the story on throwing a kitten out the window, apparently this was the lie. However, he threw a kitten off a cliff. Honestly, I understand that most of you think he was just making up these stories, but it was really weird how he was always so quiet and kept to himself, but he was really vocal and smiling and laughing when telling these stories. It was such a big change and it was kind of scary how he was totally just freaked out over the beans at breakfast. I don't know. I still hope I don't meet this guy anytime soon. Backwoods camping trip gone wrong. From 2013 to 2019, I worked in outdoor education at many different summer camps and outdoor education centers in Canada, mostly Ontario, but I did spend a season in the Rocky Mountains. Having grown up going to sleepaway camp and eventually participating in month-long leadership programs with backcountry canoeing components, I was well prepared to lead a group of teen girls from a camp in Georgian Bay on a two-week camping trip in the Temagami region during my first year as a counselor. Now, the Temagami region is located between North Bay, Sudbury, and Timmins, Ontario. This region is home to many provincial parks, wonderful hiking and canoeing routes, and the Bear Island Indian Reserve. Our route was fairly typical and beginning the Whitefish Falls region, ending at Highway 11 after 14 days of paddling, portaging, hiking, and campfire making. We had a satellite phone to check in with our camp director every single day and in case of an emergency, we also had multiple exit points along the route. Until our second to last night, we were having fun and a relatively uneventful time, besides some mild dehydration and the usual bumps and bruises. Near the end of our trip, we were doing some free camping on the shore of an uninhabited island in Bear Lake that is recognized as part of the Bear Island Indian Reserve. It's a beautiful area and we were across from the main island that the majority of the 250 person population inhabits. We had put out the fire and gone to bed when about an hour after falling asleep, I was jarred awake by the sound of a loud motorboat. Obviously, this isn't that weird because it's a large lake and many people use boats to reach mainland or their homes on secluded islands. However, it was around 11 p.m. and things had been quiet for the last few hours. The motor could cut out and I could clearly hear the sounds of an argument. It sounded like at least one man and a woman and they were very angry and yelling at each other, although I couldn't hear anything specific because they were far too offshore. Suddenly, the woman screamed and I heard a splash in the water and then complete silence. At this point, I was pretty freaked out and hoping to God that my girls hadn't woken, but I wasn't that lucky because I could hear immediate talking from their tent and could tell they were scared. I was out to zip my door and look out to see if maybe the boaters had had an accident or something when my whole tent lit up. The light slowly panned across me and onto the tent my girls were in. In a normal volume, I was able to tell them to stay absolutely still. The light panned back to my tent and then over back to theirs again. I can only guess it must have been some sort of boat with a searchlight on it. After an eternity that was really only about probably five minutes, the light was turned off and I heard the motor engage and fade as the boat drove away from us. 
I immediately found the satellite phone and called our camp director who gave us the phone number for the local police. I called them and they said they would forward the information I gave to the local native detachment on Bear Island. I don't think any of us slept that night and I got up at 5 a.m. to take my canoe out and look around. I thought maybe someone had fallen overboard and had managed to swim to shore. Obviously, I did not find anyone and there was nothing floating in the water either, although it is pretty deep body of water there. None of us wanted to camp one more night, so I called the camp and had them head out to the pickup point a day early. We paddled like hell and didn't really talk much. I didn't think any of us wanted to speculate about what we have heard and what would have happened if we had moved or made a noise when that light was on our tent. I thought about this a lot over the years, but whenever I told people about the story, they've been quite skeptical. I recently started looking into missing persons cases in the area, but without much luck. If anyone reading this is familiar with indigenous issues in Canada though, there is an epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous women, and these cases usually go unreported or unsolved. <laughs>